10 surveys, and uh, I needed 20 surveys per athlete. You can see I made it, uh, <laughs> barely. Um, and the requirement was Major League Baseball fan for five years, so that you're familiar with the steroids era, 18 and older, and any race or sex could uh, participate. The survey that I used was the same as Adam, a credibility survey from the Crouch and Stephen, I think it is. And the questions included demographic information, how old are you, um, where were you raised, and, and things like that. Also, what was your favorite Major League Baseball team? Because then you'd have a bias if I'm interviewing you about the rival baseball team or about someone who's on your team. There, there's definitely a bias there. Likert scaled areas were included, uh, which included but not uh, limited to questions about perceived intelligence, honesty, aggressiveness, and morality. After that, they were broken down into three categories that, to tell you the truth, Mike knew more about than I did, but once I got the numbers, I was able to kind of figure some stuff out. Um, and then there were three or four open-ended questions at the end of the survey, which uh, basically was asking, what can you tell me about this athlete that you can't circle in a dot, that you can't tell me on a Likert scale, how you really feel about this athlete uh, that you're not going to be able to tell me on a scale? The results were um, kind of differing. For research question one, there's, a, there's some statistics statistics that you have to understand in order to understand the results. Um, for what public relations tactics do the public view as acceptable? I asked uh, respondents about athletes before they use steroids and after they use steroids. And then once I, took, once I got both these numbers, I took the difference between the two. So uh, the lower the difference, the less credibility that they lost. So essentially, the, if you lose less credibility, then fans think your public relations tactics work. So when you look at this next slide, understand that the lower the number, the better their PR tactic worked. As you can see, hypothesis one and two were both proved correct. Fortification was the most effective because Andy Pettit and Jason Giambi had the lowest uh, mean difference at 15.65 and 14.6. And the denial was uh, the worst public relations tactic, as you can see, as these are considerably higher than this. Now, Rafael Palmero, he is an anomaly uh, that I'm going to talk about in discussions and limitations. So um, I, I will discuss his numbers just a little bit later. As far as research question two goes, did more favorable athletes require a different public relations strategy? And the answer was a resounding no. As you can see here, before his, uh, before his credibility, or before his negative event, Jason Giambi, uh, the higher number represents less credibility here. And he has less credibility, was less popular than Andy Pettit uh, by a considerable amount. But they both used mortification, and they both uh, got different or got the same results. They admitted to their mistakes, and they lost less credibility than others. As you can see, Barry Bonds and Jason Giambi were comparable, not very popular athletes, and uh, took two different routes and uh, and got two different results. Research question three: the support from colleagues. There is uh, insufficient quantitative evidence on this question. I couldn't really uh, come up with any of the statistics that proved the uh, hypothesis correct or incorrect. And then research question four, can athletes' images be fully restored after a negative event? Again, another resounding no. Um, by the hypothesis that they could was incorrect. Jason Giambi was the closest to doing so at 14.6, but that is still considerably far away from the ideal number, which is zero. As far as discussion goes, what I, come to, what, what I came to find after the hypothesis and, and all the statistics were run is exactly what I hope to find quantitatively. Implementing mortification immediately after coming out and admitting um, that what you did was wrong and that you actually did it is the most effective public relations strategy according to Major League Baseball fans. Um, McGuire did use mortification, but this was five years after he had been denying <coughs> that he, he had done it for five years. Um, so mortification is the most effective strategy, and denial was by far the least effective public relations strategy. Now about the Palmero anomaly, which also brought me to the limitations of my study. One of the big limitations of the study was the respondents that I got for each survey. I did use Qualtrex, and I also handed them out um, in survey hard copy form. So there were, for a lot of uh, different surveys, I got a lot of different age ranges, but um, for Palmero, the average age was 20.6, and he he set all of his he had all of his accomplishments in the mid 90s, which left these respondents to be about five or six when he was kind of in his heyday. So it's hard to reflect on an athlete from your childhood. Um, 
now. That memory is, is kind of gone, and that was definitely one of the limitations, was the age and when Palmero was um, you know, hit, getting his 3,000 hits and 500 home runs. As far as future research goes, hopefully this study bridges the gap between past research and future research. As noted earlier in the presentation, there's a large need for this research in today's uh, area of celebrity and sport. There's, there's public relations firms uh, strictly dedicated to sports, and, and that's, it's really on the rise, sports is, so the, the research in this field is a necessity. And what researchers in public relations sports field have right in front of them is a very interesting situation. Instead of researching about then and enacting it now, what has to be done is you have to research about now so that you can use it in the future. And I thought that was a really um, interesting uh, approach to take as researchers. Uh, now I just want to give a thank you to, um, to Linda. Thank you very much. I appreciate your help. Um, I, I, was kind of a, I was kind of a different situation. I had to travel back and forth from Milwaukee and Appleton all the time, all over that campus. So Linda and Mike especially, he helped me with his... He didn't want to have to deal with my papers, and I, I dealt, I mean, not didn't want to have to, but I sent him my rough draft instead of my actual copy, so that was bad. <laughs> um, Sean Mobley is up top row in the yellow, can't miss him. He made that video at the beginning, um, so that was, thank you very much, Sean. And then my family, uh, always been supportive, especially my dear old mom, who actually came all the way from Milwaukee today, um, from when I was a little hellion, the last of four. Uh, holding under her leg and crying in kindergarten to my last day of school here. Really appreciate the support, Mom. It's, it's awesome. So, couldn't thank you enough. So, here are my references, and I can take any questions anybody has.